I don't think I recall seeing anything more shocking than the night you lost the TNT Championship to Samoa Joe on Dynamite. When you and Joe were tag team partners, you traveled together. I'm sure you had many private conversations, as friends would do. Sometimes, in hindsight, you may look back and say, I shouldn't have said that. I shouldn't have gone there. He didn't need to know about my knee, that type thing. So in any event, here we are. What's next for you? Joe and I did share some personal stories with our time together. The part of the story with my father I want to share today is from the time I was, can remember, to the time I was eight years old. That man instilled every ounce of athleticism and drive that I have in me today. You know, we went out in the backyard and, and we played and, and he prepped me for my future. Unfortunately, from the time I was eight until the time I was a young adult, he was not in my life. But as a young adult, he re-entered my life and we were finally able to start to have some sort of a father-son relationship. As soon as that happened, I got a call from him saying he was starting to throw up every day and he wasn't feeling himself and he was coming back to Ohio to get checked out. I received another call two days later that he had stage four cancer and didn't have a lot of time left. Unfortunately, the next time I would see him would be as he laid in a hospital bed on hospice. Tough. And my father growing up um, always had a big beard, always had long hair, always had a ponytail. He was a big, intimidating looking man. And I walked into this room and I saw a lifeless body, his hair gone, his beard gone. His nose was like filled with this crusty blood and he just laid there lifeless. And they told me um, I could talk to him, but he wouldn't be able to respond. It was impossible for him to speak. Um, so I sat there and, and I, you know, I just said, you know, hey dad, I'm here, you know, I'm here with you. And uh, his lips started to move a little bit and he was able to mutter the word son. And uh, that was the last thing he ever said. And a tear came down his face and I didn't know what to say. Um, so I just told him I was there, there for him, I'm there with him. And I knew he wasn't at peace. So I had to come up with something to tell him to give him any sort of peace before he passed. I had just started my wrestling journey and he did make it to my first indie show. Oh, cool. So he was able to see me wrestle and he was so proud of me. So I just told him, I'm gonna make it. And that's all I could think of to tell him to give him any peace was that I promise you I will be a better man, I will do right, and I'm gonna make it. And that was the last thing I ever said to him. Um, I got a phone call the next morning that he had passed. And uh, after he passed, I had never grown my beard, never grew my hair, but after seeing cancer take that all from him, I decided for the first time I'm gonna grow my beard out, I'm gonna grow my hair out. And, uh, and that's the look that, you know, we've come to learn and know of Wardlow over the past few years. And Joe knew that. And Joe took that from me. My connection with my father took that from me. Now look me in the eyes because this is the last thing you're ever gonna see is the man you are today. Because I am going to take everything from you. Your title, your pride, your ability to call yourself the most dangerous man in the room. Even though you've survived every company, every monster this business has to offer, you will not survive me.